What's up guys, welcome back to another Detroit Lions video. Um, today we have another fan suggestion for, you know, just a video idea that they wanted to see. Um, the other day I asked, and John Adkins asked, you know, can you do a video on what realistic expectations should be for the secondary? Um, you know, and I think this is a good suggestion. Uh, I kind of went over the secondary um, in a different video, um, but I more looked at what they did last year and I looked at them as individuals, not as an entire unit. Um, so for this video, I'm going to go over the starting five that I think are going to play in the secondary, the starting three corners and the starting two safeties, um, and what I think their stat lines are going to be. And then I'm going to go over just as a whole the entire unit, just so we kind of cover a little bit of stats projection and then just as a whole uh, how the unit is going to turn out. So, you know, if you are enjoying the content and are new to the channel, consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and sharing it with a Lions or an NFL fan that you think would enjoy watching the content. But with that being said, let's get into our secondary and what some realistic expectations should be for next season. Um, so as I said earlier, I wanted to look at the starting five players for, um, you know, who I think is going to start for the Detroit Lions the next year. Um, the starting three corners, I think it would be Desmond Trufant, Jeffrey Dukuda, and Justin Coleman. And then I think the starting safeties are going to be Tracy Walker and Deron Harmon. Um, you know, so I kind of went over how I did this, or at least how I came up with these stats, as I looked at, uh, well, for the veterans, I looked at what they did in their past, in their career, kind of what their averages were as, you know, as far as career per season, what they average as far as picks, turnovers, um, you know, passes defended, stuff like that. Um, and then for Jeffrey Okuda, who I'm going to start with, um, I actually looked at the last five defensive backs that have come out of Ohio State in the first round, um, and I kind of compared, I kind of looked at their stats, what each one of them put up in their rookie season, um, except for Gary on Connolly, because he, he didn't play very much in his rookie season, so I did his full season, his full first season as a starter, which was his sophomore season, um, but I looked at those, and I kind of saw, you know, what to expect from a DB from Ohio State in the NFL, um, so obviously the first player was... Denzel Ward from the Cleveland Browns. In his rookie season, he had three interceptions, 11 passes defended, a forced fumble, and two fumble recoveries. Uh, Marshawn Lattimore, as a rookie, had five interceptions, 18 passes defended, a fumble, a forced fumble, and a fumble recovery. Gary on Connolly, in his second season, had three interceptions, 15 passes defended, and one touchdown. Um, Eli Apple had one interception, seven passes defended, a forced fumble, and two fumble recoveries. And... Uh, Bradley Roby had two interceptions, 13 passes defended, two forced fumbles, and two fumble recoveries. So, you know, based on that, looking at the DBs that have come out of Ohio State in recent years in the first round, um, you know, I ha have it in the range that Jeffrey Okuda will have three to five interceptions, 10 to 14 pass deflections, a forced fumble, and a fumble recovery. Um, you know, I don't think that's unrealistic. I think that he is the, you know, as far as comparisons he's been you know said to be the best cornerback to come out of Ohio State in several several years um you know some of those guys are really good uh Denzel Ward and La Marshawn Lattimore are you know borderline elite cornerbacks um and if Jeffrey Okuda could be better than them I could definitely see him having three to five interceptions I don't think that's unrealistic um you know 10 to 14 pass defense uh passes defended um, you know, I don't think that's unrealistic. I think he'll be on some of the better wide receivers in the NFL. Um, I think he'll be guarding some really good guys, and I don't think the NFL quarterbacks are scared to test him yet, um, especially early in the season. So I think he can make him pay. Um, and then it just seems like a theme that cornerbacks from Ohio State are physical and are good at hitting the ball, uh, you know, ripping the ball out and getting some turnovers on the ground, um, you know, just getting forced fumbles and recovering those fumbles. Um, and obviously Jeffrey Okuda is a physical cornerback. He wants to tackle. He wants to hit you hard. He wants to, you know, get the football out and get a turnover however he can. So I think that he's going to have at least one fumble recovery and one forced fumble. Um, for Desmond Trufant, last year with the Atlanta Falcons, he had four interceptions, which was a career high, seven passes defended. Um, and he only played in eight or uh, nine games for the Falcons. Um, his career average, he averages 1.8 interceptions a season and 11 passes defended. Um, so I think a realistic stat line this year would be about two interceptions and 10 to 12 pass breakups, um, somewhere in there. Um, I think that he will thrive in Patricia's man system. We play man a lot. Um, I can't remember the exact number, but it was the highest in the league last season that we played man coverage. Desmond Trufant is, he excels in man coverage. I think that he will have, you know, a good season in Detroit. I don't think he'll, he'll quite have four interceptions, but you never know. Um, you know, he had four last year, which was a career high, so he might make another leap. He might have four or five interceptions. 
Um, but I think it's a more realistic thing to say that he'll have it, you know, two to, you know, maybe three um, and a couple passes defended. Uh, moving on to Justin Coleman. Last year with the Detroit Lions, he had one interception, 13 passes defended, two forced fumble, or three forced fumbles, and a fumble recovery. Um, I for Des, or for Justin Coleman, I went off of the when he started playing consistently as a starter, um, because for the Patriots, he was you know he didn't play a whole lot. He kind of only played on special teams and a little bit in the slot. Um, so I went off of his Seahawks and Detroit Lions stat line because that's when he first you know that's when he really emerged as a starting player in the NFL a starting caliber cornerback, and I thought it would only be fair. I didn't want to, you know, lower his career stats because he didn't play the first couple of years. Um, but his, you know, average since becoming a starter, he averages 1.3 interceptions a season, 1.3 forced fumbles, a fumble recovery, and 10.6 passes defended a season. Um, obviously, he had three forced fumbles last year. I think that he was coached to hit the ball, um, you know, get your fit, you know, punch the ball out as much as you can. I think we saw it a lot in the Chiefs game where, you know, even if they caught the ball, you know, he was waiting for them to get back up so he could hit the ball and try to knock it loose. And he did several times last year. Um, you know, I think a realistic stat line is going to be another interception, 11 passes defended, two forced fumbles, and a fumble recovery. Um, Tracy Walker, our starting safety, last year he had one interception, eight passes defended, and a forced fumble. His career average is one interception and five passes defended a season, but last year was his first year starting. Um, as a rookie, he was more of a role player, more of a rotational guy, and he still ended up with an interception and a couple pass breakups. So, you know, that was very, very good for him. Um, you know, I think that he could take another step forward. I don't think it would be unrealistic to see two or three interceptions if he's healthy all season, you know. But just based on what I've seen, based on what he's done in the past, I think one interception, seven uh, seven to ten passes defended and a forced fumble are, you know, not unrealistic for him. Um, I think he could definitely jump. I think he could definitely be better than that. But, you know, based on what he's done in the past, that is a realistic stat line. Um, and then Duran Harmon, last year he had two interceptions and five passes defended. Um, Duran Harmon has never gone a year without an interception. Um, and he has never been a full-time safety. Uh, which is something really crazy to think about. He's never played a full season as a starting safety for the Patriots. Um, he's always been a rotational guy, and he always gets interceptions, and usually it's to clinch games. Um, in his career, he averages 2.4 interceptions a season and four passes defended. Um, obviously, coming into the Detroit Lions being a full-time starter now, or at least projected to be a full-time starter at strong safety, um, I have him getting you know at least three interceptions and eight to ten passes defended. Um, you know, he's a ball hawk. He's a smart safety. He, you know, is really good at high pointing and taking the ball away. Um, you know, and I think that he's going to cause a lot of turnovers. I think he's going to be a veteran presence and he's going to be a leader in the back end. Um, and I think that he's going to cause a lot of turnovers next season. Um, so those are kind of the starting five, um, you know, and then going over it as a whole, uh, we've obviously put a lot of capital into our secondary. Um, you know, Jeff Okuda is a first round pick, the number three overall pick. Desmond Trufant, we spent $20 million on. Um, Justin Coleman's the highest paid uh, slot cornerback. Tracy Walker was a third round pick. Will Harris is the third round pick that we traded up to get. Uh, we traded for Deron Harmon. I mean, there's just a lot of capital put into the secondary. And on paper, it should be an elite secondary. You know, Jeffrey Okuda is an amazing cornerback. Desmond Trufant is still very, very good. Justin Coleman's a good cornerback. Jerona Harmon has not played a full season and still gets interceptions every year. Tracy Walker is emerging as one of the top safeties in the if in the in the division, if not the NFL. Um, you know, I think he's underrated a lot, but I think that he's emerging as a a, a very, very good safety. Um, you know, but I think that a lot of it also comes down to the pass rush because if the pass rush doesn't get there no matter if you have Deion Sanders and Mel Blunt and um you know you could have the you could have a combination of the best players in the world on the secondary in all of, in their primes and if your pass rush can't get there they can't cover for eight nine seconds I mean it's just not possible eventually somebody's going to work their way open so our pass rush has to get home next season um but I think even if they don't you know get there a ton I think if you know we have a similar pass rush to last year um I think that our ceiling as a secondary is going to be a top 10 unit. Um, you know, I think we have a ton of talent and a ton of resources put into that. And I think that we could definitely be a top 10 to top five kind of secondary next season. Um, but I think that our floor, like the lowest possible, um, you know, range we could get to is, you know, 
in the 20s. I don't think that we're going to be a bottom 10 secondary. Um, personally, even if we don't have great pass rush, I just think that, you know, we have too much talent to be a bottom secondary. Um, I think at least we'll be at 20 or 21 to 22, you know, something at that, like the high 20s to the teens, somewhere in there at the sea or at the floor. Um, I just can't see the Detroit Lions secondary being that bad with all the money, all the draft capital, all the, you know, time and effort spent to get that with a defensive coordinator who was a defensive backs coach for the Eagles last year, who preaches, you know, ripping the ball out, being physical, um, high pointing the ball, being aggressive. You know, I just cannot see any reality where the secondary is as bad as it was last year. And, you know, I can't see a reality where we are a bottom 10 secondary in the NFL, no matter how bad the pass rush is. So um, I hope that answered your question, John. Um, you know, I enjoyed doing the research for this video. Um, if anybody else wants to see a different position that, you know, you want to, uh, that you want to see stat predictions for, um, I can definitely do that. I think secondary was a good place to start because it has changed so much from last year. Um, obviously Deron Harmon's new, uh, Desmond Trufant's new, but uh, Jeff Okuda is new. You know, we have a lot of, you know, hype in that position. We have a lot of uncertainty in that position though. And I think this was a good one to look at first. Um, but as I said, if anybody wants to see a different position, different, you know, different stat predictions for a, you know, either say wide receivers or even, you know, defensive line linebackers, uh, I can definitely do that. Just let me know what position you would like to see. Um, but with that being said, that is all I have for you today. If there is Lions news before tomorrow, um, you know, I will obviously make a video letting you guys know. Um, you know, something might happen soon. I've seen a lot of rumors about make, the Lions making a big move. Uh, they have a lot of cap space. You know, I have, I've seen a lot of rumors about, you know, maybe Jadavion Clowney. Um, I've seen Jamal Adams stuff. You know, I've even seen a couple Yannick Ngakwe's. Um, so I think something is going to happen. Um, but obviously, I'm not going to make a video until anything does officially, you know, go through. So um, if you do have, you know, any video ideas that you would like to see, put them in the comments below. Any positions you want to see stat predictions for, leave it in the comments below. Uh, thank you, everybody, so much for watching. If you are enjoying the content, consider liking the video, subscribe to the channel, and sharing with a fan of the NFL or of the Detroit Lions. Um, but that is all I have for you today. Thank you, everybody, so much for watching. Have an absolutely fantastic day, and that is all I have right now. I will see everybody later. Thank you all for watching.